So, good morning and welcome to another video. Uh, this week we're going to be doing the pond, the new concrete pond for the ducks. Uh, fit some new jazzy devices for them. We need to move this one so I can... The step needs to be at the same level as the shovel. So we need to drop this down a few inches. And one measure of SBR, which is uh, styrene butadine rubber. Get me. And we do a bit more digging in the pond. So I have a reducer 40 to 32 and a 32 mil tap. And we're gonna put this on the bottom. So I've got a wheelbarrow full of stones, which Aren't going to be a lot of use for building a wall because none of them have a flat face gnarly. On. They're a bit gnarly. We're also going to be doing a little bit more work to the steps in the uh, water mine, which needs covering up because it's going green already. So as you can see, uh, I've got six stakes, a couple of beams, and a uh, trusty mini digger here. What we're going to do? is put three stakes in the ground, um, three metres apart, well, sorry, three stakes in the ground, and then screw one of these poles to the top of them, do another row here, and then I'm gonna dig out uh, a bigger pond than, than a um, kiddie's sandbox for the ducks, yeah? Because this area is quite wet, so it should hold water fairly well. So we're just gonna dig an area a bit bigger and put some shade over the top of it to stop the water going green. Uh, in the summer. Let's give it a go. I'm waiting for my glamorous assistant who's on her way by the look of it. Yep. Be careful. Because I'm looking directly at the sun.
so I couldn't penetrate the ground with the posts uh, I'll show you what happens yeah so ground obviously too hard so I've used steel post instead so it's only to give shade and I've just realized I made a mistake because I have to remove this one now so I can dig it out So there we go, uh, yeah, didn't film a lot of that, but uh, the lid's on, the pond's dug, and uh, as I thought, it's been running away, so we'll have to wait for the ducks to get in there and puddle around in this, make it waterproof, and then we'll gradually fill this little area up, give them a lot more, a lot more area, and the sun, because it's evening now, the sun's fairly low in the sky, so the shade's all the way over to here. The shades all the way over to here but that'll be fine in the summer the, the, the sun will be straight above this and i may even put a side panel on just to stop that from happening but uh there we go the start of a new pond so we've come to start work down here dogs here uh come on here quinn here on. quinn here quinn quinn so aren't you just Trying to get the mum and the kids out. So we can do some work in there. Oh, I don't know how they survive. I really don't. Come on. They get stood on. Also, <laughs> bless you. Go, <Come> Fab. <laughs> right. So the plan is, I have a wheelbarrow full of rocks. Um, I'm going to put a pipe in the bottom of here. We're going to use the rocks to just to make up the, the size. I think the position of it is pretty good where it is. Uh, yeah, just to make it a bit more shallow. Um, and then we're going to put a pipe in the middle that it drains down into. So we'll do all that while being looked at by the pigs. The idea is this 40 mil. Piece. Oh, it's been squat there. I'll do it the other way. I'll have this piece of 40 mil pipe coming into the centre of the ring along the ground and through this wall. So I have to drill a hole here first. I know the levels because um, when Ange cleaned it out the other day, she tipped the water out so I could tell that the ring is 50 mil higher than where I need to drill the hole. So look at that. Quinn. Quinn, come on. Quinn's fascinated by babies. Did you get your babies? Do you have babies? <laughs> so we'll make a hole. Come on. I'd say something there. About here. Yeah. So having made a hole here at ground level, that will be ground level um, on the outside anyway. We'll put the pipe through. And I'll uh, manipulate it on this end to go underneath here. Uh, Bloody shadow. So I've got a trusty bar of iron to get this underneath here. Oh. Get it in there somewhere. And then I'll probably enough. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get a rock in a minute, hang on. <laughs> so I've got a wheelbarrow full of stones which aren't going to be a lot of use for building a wall because none of them have a flat face Gnarly. On. They're a bit gnarly so I'll use these to trig this up uh, so it doesn't squat the pipe. Come here. Right, that's better. 
So I need to turn that on. So the plan is to use these just to make up the height at the bottom. <coughs> does any of this make sense to anyone? <laughs> it just makes sense to me. I think it does, darling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure when it's all done, it will make a lot more sense. <laughs> Just leaving a, a gap so the concrete can go underneath the edge and seal it like it didn't on the uh, <laughs> on the other ring. Oh dear! Okay, so that's our fill out of stones. I'm going to concrete up to sort of this level because we didn't want this too deep. They don't need it awfully deep. So 160 inches, 150 mil will be fine. So the pipes here, I'll be cutting the pipe off about here. So it, and and then sloping the concrete to the pipe, just like that. Um, yeah, I'll go make some concrete. So here we go. Here's our concrete's here. Oh, all mixed up. I'll just transfer that into here. Might have to get another load. Sure, but uh, let's keep going. There we go, um, that was enough actually. What I'll do now, let this go off a little bit because uh, it's still obviously just wet concrete. Uh, give it an hour or two and then I'll come back with a bit of um, dry cement and I'll sprinkle dry cement on the surface and then and rub it in with my little um, benching. I call this a benching trial because it's small, you can get rid of little lines with it and stuff. So, yeah. I'll do that, give it an hour, come back, sprinkle some cement on it, rub it in, and uh, should be good. So, I've got a mix of mortar here, just a coarse sand and cement. It is very wet, um, mistakenly. So I'll have to shovel it in here first, just to finish this wall off. But um, obviously if it's in contact with stone and earth, it will dry out quickly. So that's what we're doing at the minute. And then I'll go and select some stones to fit in here. But this is very dry. That's very dry. Very wet stuff. But like I say, it starts drying out really quickly once you put it into contact with stones and stuff. So I'm hoping it will dry out. enough for me to make some wall out of it. So I've just filled the in a little bit, put a bit more muck in here, start filling in holes like so. Don't worry about any of the excess when it dries off this will tidy up nicely. Uh, a bit limited for space I'm right in the gap here between the two walls and I'm wider than the gap, but oh, there we go. Let's see if we can get that in there somewhere. Like, like that, maybe. 
Yeah, loving that. Yeah, like I said, this is way, way too wet to do anything sensible with, but I might have to leave it being so wet. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, look. To leave that and come back to it. Way too wet. So what I found now, just trying to get this step in a bit more secure, is under here is uh, concrete as well. So I've put a little bed of mortar on, yeah, just to bed this one onto, uh, and I've built up a little wall, so that, like the front of the step there. So if I just put you there for a second, something like that, I'll try and nestle this one into it. Because it's got an angle on the front. I quite like that. <coughs> Maybe a bit more back there. address the wall on the front maybe put some different stones in here now to make this look a bit better uh, so many small stuff though so like I said before this is way too wet to be doing this with that's pretty good a little stone here I think a little one there and uh, that'll tidy up all right time to get the pointing done like so I'll be okay. Take that one out. Put something else in here. Let's go and have a look. Just used up um, a barrel full of mix. What I'll do now is, you can see I've put stones underneath these and filled this in here, the face of the steps or the riser. Um, I'll have to let this dry off a bit and then I'll come down with a brush, brush it off and we'll see what it looks like when it's all done. So there we go, all brushed off and all the joints are cleaned up a bit. Yeah, um, all I've got to do now is wait for this to go off. <coughs> Backfill in behind with soil, plenty of soil here. And then put another layer on until we're built up to this sort of height here, to ground level, yeah, top of that basically, top of this one sort of level across here. And then um, I do have to finish, <coughs> I do have to dig this electric cable in a duct here, I'll dig it back that way, build up here, yeah, put our next, build up the, come on, the riser off of this, build a riser up for another slab to go on top, over the top of that, yeah, and then that'll be basically the, maybe another step, one more step after that and we're done. Yeah, all fits in fairly well. On this lovely sunny day, we have been very lucky 
and have a new toy to play with. Now, yeah. as you know, very tempted to get a motorbike, but instead we've we're been given a new electric bike. So, uh, see the crashing in the background. <laughs> Ta-da! So thanks to EUY e-bikes, um, e we've been given this EUY e-bike uh, to Just demonstrate, stay. have a look at and ride around and have some fun and um, tell you what it's like. So what we're going to do is a, a classic YouTube unboxing. Go, that's uh, most of it off, all the packaging off and in bits. Now, as if by magic, we'll put it together. So there it is, all put together. Um, quite a funky looking thing. It's quite, uh, well, I find this magnesium alloy frame and it's really well, it feels solid, you know. Um, it's obviously the same as most of them, has the five pedal assist. So, helmet on, let's take it for a spin. So, strictly on pedal assist. As you can see, I'm on um, pedal assist mode 3. It's put me along at about 18 kilometers an hour. Which is quite cool. It's really the uh, Shimano gears are really easy to use. You've got your thumb and finger. There's two levers here. You just pull the finger on to change down and push it to change up. Really quite very, very simple. It's the first time I've seen that. And then the power assist is on this little button here. Let me get somewhere flatter in it and quieter. So then you can it up into fourth and fifth. Whoa, it's quite rapid. And I'm hardly pedaling at all. I haven't charged it or anything, it's just straight out the box. It does feel very stable, like the weight is low down. doing very well up here. This is very steep. Wow. I did have to pedal a bit then. It is very steep though. Seven speed Shimano gears. As you can see, the EUY bike K6T is a folding bike. Um, yeah, it folds up really quite small. Although it's not the lightest, it is fairly heavy. Uh, I'll put the weight up on the screen here. But um, yeah, it goes quite compact. And also the pedals, if you push them in, fold up as well. Yeah, very really cool. Because it's folded, it's the only way get the battery in and out yeah might need to just lift it up yeah that's why so the, the key just locks the battery in place and then the charger if you take the battery out to charge it just fits in there and makes it all waterproof and now I'll unfold it to show you how easy it is literally we do that Screw this one back up. 
nice and tight and that's got that locked then we bring the handlebars up like so and just clip that in and there we have it stand down unfolded okay so uh this this bike the eu y bike k6t or the k6 plus will go from five foot six just on our tiptoes so it's not for very short people it will go from five foot six well i'm five foot five and a half so. this is why she's on tippity tiptoes <laughs> but only just any shorter yeah. i wouldn't recommend it to six foot five which is a little bit more than me so uh yeah there's a there's a huge height range there no tippy toes for you darling no tippy toes but I, I can go a bit higher this k6t or the k6 plus electric bike is uh has a 48 volt battery 18 amp hour 250 watt rear motor to, to comply with being legal in europe honest 250 watt um has a 90 about a 90 kilometer range a uh, really lovely comfy wide seat yeah with, with a flashy light on it and all that stuff going on uh you've got a back rack reflector seven speed shimano gears yeah hydraulic disc brakes front and rear with 180 mil discs so it stops really well big chunky fat tires four inch tires 100 mil wide uh 20 inch they would be they are and they've got this fancy with reflector around both tires which is really quite cool and white wall tires somewhere. white wall tires <laughs> and a nice paint job full suspension front and rear with this shock in the rear um the build quality i mean it feels really it's a magnesium alloy frame and it feels what really really well made it feels really strong feels it's, really sturdy it's one, one of the most sturdy low central gravity uh, e-bikes i've ridden actually i'm really quite impressed by it yeah especially for a folding one as well i think a lot of the times the folding ones seem quite well, not delicate but but this it's yeah. like a it's, it's a chunky beast um it's got your five speed assist pedal assist mode pas goes up to three four five yeah which is restricted to 25 kilometers an hour in Europe, Europe yeah. but you can, by pressing these two buttons and following the instructions in the manual, you can alter all the parameters of this. Um, at the moment, the hand throttle is disconnected, but like I said, you can alter that in the manual. So it's all good. So uh, if you're interested in this, please um, have a look in the description. There's a link to this. It'll be the first part of the description. And uh, yeah, have fun. We really enjoyed it. So here we are. We need to move this one so I can, the step needs to be at the same level as the shovel. So we need to drop this down a few inches here so we can just lower this here. Yeah? We know it's a cable inside and not a pipe, so we don't have to worry too much about, um, well, we have to worry about damaging it, but, but putting a kink or a bend in it, not a kink. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's get digging. Oh, and there's the water pipe. Uh -huh. So, well, that's, I never expected to find that so quickly. So, I may have to get a smaller digging utensil. This is the water pipe now. So, I need to dig back further that way so I can lower both of them. And the step needs to sit at this level, so I need them. I need them to be at, at this level. It's not a lot. I'll, I'll tunnel a lot underneath, so as not to damage this. So there we go. Now I've dug back a meter, three foot or so, just to give these plenty of room to sit down flat enough, so I can get a slab over the top. But what I'm going to do, I've cut these two. Got grease on them. Cut these two pipes here, bigger pipes, to slip these inside of. Just in case I ever do need to replace them, I won't have to break out the steps 
I can just um, slide them out, slide them back in. Find the slot. Hope this makes sense. There we go. Don't forget, nothing worth doing is ever easy. Stuck my pipes there. I'll use a bit of this fine and stuff just to hold them down. Now I need to find some stone for here. Uh, I think this flat one I brought down earlier. <coughs> Unless I can find a flatter one, I think this uh, is a perfect candidate to go something like that. I need to fill in this hole, put concrete, big stone in there to make the face of this. And that, oh, that's pretty good. So I found a stone which looks like it would be perfect for here. Um, it's a little bit high, so I have to dress some off the bottom. And maybe it needs to go over there, so I need to dress this end off as well. But that's looking good for height and everything. Time it, this comes down level with this pipe. Uh, so get the hammer out and dress it up. Got my glasses on. Um, I've got a simple scutch hammer. Uh, the combs are nearly worn out, but and uh, a cold chisel and a, and a lump hammer. What I do need to do is take this bottom off here, which which is fairly easy, and I might be able to do that with a hammer even. Just Yeah, it's fairly soft stuff. Yeah, keep going at that. And again, this end, I need to trim it back to about there. Similar type of thing, I think it's fairly soft enough, yeah. Oh, that was... <laughs> so that big chunk just came off. Um, almost do that side. So I'll just work along the bottom here and... Uh, I don't know if you could see that, it's just come off there, really nice and square on my end. So it's just this bottom piece to dress up and um, I'll show you the finished job. So, I'm hoping it something like that. Yeah. There we go. From the concrete, concrete in the back filled in. Then this stone will come over the top of that. Uh, a few little bits to finish, to finish, to fill in. I'll be fine. I'll go and mix some concrete. I think. So you can see it better here. Fits lovely there. Uh, good face on it. The right height to put a little bit of mortar on top and just. Sink it right there. I need to fill the back with concrete, obviously. Cool. Okay, so there's one bucket of concrete in there already. Let's see. I'm sort of loving that. Oh, good. I'll bring the back of that now up to underside of slab level. I'll probably have to mix some mortar to lay this on, something a bit softer. Um, I'll try it with concrete but I don't think it'll work. Because the problem with concrete is because the aggregate in it, you get big lumps that um, always get in the way without question so I'll have a go let's tip this up oh, 
Come hand it. I'm not holding out much hope of this being successful, but <coughs> you never know. work what we'll have to do is all this front where the concrete is um, underneath here I'll scrape that out like so I'll use that back in there so what I'll do is this gap I'll get some small stones something like this and mortar them in just to fill that gap yeah but obviously I can't use concrete as mortar obviously because of the big lumps in it it's not very good for laying stuff on there we go so we'll fill that in we'll cover this with a rock here uh, I'll have to dig some of this out to get some foundation in there and then yeah another step so there we go for this week, uh, that's as far as I'm going to go because I'm going to have to start work taking where they built this structure to house the pump, uh, they just piled a load of stones up against it here. What I'll be doing is taking these stones away so I can dig a trench from here towards that fantastic mini digger, uh, about two foot deep, maybe a bit deeper, at the depth of a rotavator anyway. Um, right in line here so and then I'll be drilling through this wall and we'll have a whole new filtration system etc for our basically we're going to put an irrigate well a, a system in to every paddock so we have fresh water at the gate of every paddock so the uh, we can top up the drinking water really easy but like carrying buckets around and stuff so here we are concrete's all gone hard in the duck pond uh, all I need to do is cut this off and grind it flat so we've got somewhere for the water to well, the lowest point then, yeah, is done. Um, what I'll do then is I'll mix up a SBR with cement mix and paint the inside like a tanking slurry. But it'll be a flexible, t like a flexible tanking slurry. Um, that should keep it waterproof. So here goes. To do with it. Not sure if a knife is the best thing for doing this, but yeah. So I use the grinder and uh, grind this flat. So there we go. Let's grind that off. Uh, something like I want it. Yeah. Now I'm just going to obviously clean the mess I've made up now, and then get some homemade tanking slurry. I'm going to tank the whole the whole tank. You guys are very brave. Okay, so we do four cement. One measure of water. And one measure of SBR, which is uh, styrene butadine rubber. Get me. So otherwise known as some people, especially in Europe, call this latex mix. Uh, you can add it to your mortar mix to make it more flexible. But this is also a great waterproofer. Now all I need to do is mix that up and paint it on. So we have four cement, one water, one SBR. Styrene butadine rubber And that gives us a slurry mix like this Which will waterproof 
nearly any concrete surface and many other things so I'll just put the lid on that keep it hydrated and uh, just quickly want to say the SBR was uh, donated to us by the Origin Homestead Laura and Dan or Dan and Laura uh, thanks guys awesome fresh use today so clean up my uh, pipe pipe cutting dust So that's one coat on, I'll leave that uh, for as long as it takes me to go another cup of tea. Should be dry then, I'll come back and do the other coat. So there we go, two coats all done and finished. Uh, leave that a day to dry off and then we can fill it with water. Way. So you find me in the water tank down by the vegetable garden, uh, clearing up the detritus I uh, do this every year. All this is just um, pond weed and dust which accumulates over the year. Now it's dry, it's easy to clean up. Um, while I'm in here, I'll use up the leftover uh, tanking slurry that, that I made up. Just to see if I see any cracks, I'll fill them in with that slurry and we should be good for another year. So as you can see, I've identified when it goes down halfway, but a crack here, this corner. This is a new crack that's happened. So I'll be doing something with that. So there we go. Uh, done this corner where we had the crack here and up the corner, that corner as well. And this little crack there. And I've done that corner just for good measure. So that's a couple of coats of the SBR slurry mix. Uh, that should be good now. Nice flexible mix. So any future movement in those joints will be sort of covered. You know, it, it is flexible, so it should be okay. Well, that's that done. There we go. Another little job ticked off.
So you can see where I'm digging now. I've swapped over to the other side and uh, it's just started to rain. Swapped over to the other side to get this bottom corner out, which I'm achieving. Uh, I just need to go down and check for depth. So all the way down the bottom here, it looks like this was the original bottom line here because this is where the sandbags have been set against. I think this is what I've re-dug out. The time I square this off, uh, probably gone down 450, 500 mil, 18 inches, 20 inches, something like that. Uh, I think, oh my, you can see this is new ground here, look. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure, well for me that's deep enough. I need to get Ange uh, out to bank me so I can dig this corner in properly. But uh, yeah, that'll give us, let me see. So from where I'm stood, the water level will be up here somewhere. So that'll probably give me eight foot, eight foot deep, 2.4 meters, something around there. Uh, which is what I wanted to achieve. Because if it's deeper here, it's gonna be colder in the bottom because on the surface it gets hot. Now we're gonna recirculate the water in the future with a solar pump. The, uh, the water should, generally the whole thing should be a lot cooler. Plus all the outside area, outside of the swim zone, will be planted anyway, so that should be all shaded. And I am gonna make some form of shade to go over the swim zone. And where I'm stood here, there will be a bridge going over the end of the swim zone. So that's all we have time for this week everyone thank you for watching I um, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you did enjoy it please give us a big like up here on the moon Somewhere. gate Doo -doo. and if you liked it and you're not subscribed please subscribe because it helps us loads and it's free and don't forget to ring that little notification bell ding, ding. to get notifications of upcoming future videos and we'll see you in the next one bye, bye.